Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of Añejo tequilas that are fairly new. I say that because one is pretty much brand new within the last three weeks uh, releasing here in Texas and the other one's been out since I think late 22 but I was just able to get my hands on one here in 23. The Patron a Sherry Cask Añejo. Now this one is aged for a full, at least a full two years in those Oloroso sherry casks bottled at 40% ABV. They are a batch product and you can tell the batch numbers by the end of this little code down here. It's handwritten. Uh, this one's 08. I've seen 07s, 09s, 10s, but 08s, um, I've had two different ones from this uh, kind of lot from the 08s and one was very fresh sherry, really nice, and the other one, this one, is a little more on the sulfur twinge and so you know we're going to talk about that when i get to the actual tasting of it uh, but pricing wise again 100 dollars is typically where you'll see it i've seen it as low as 70 high as 125. all right la pulga añejo just dropped three weeks ago here in texas again if you're uh, been following my channel you may have seen me do the blanco reposado video review of this and that's because they launched with those two ready back again four six months ago they didn't have the añejo ready at the time and i really liked how well the blanco and reposado came out so i was kind of eagerly awaiting this release but also a little hesitant because i was like you know what if it doesn't live up to the hype you know i mean i have these high expectations now and then it came out, and I was like, yeah, this is really good. And so tasted my friends on it, uh, tasted my wife on it, and she's a very big critic of tequilas, uh, but she really loved this one. And so uh, the thing to note about this one is it is from NOM 1068. That distillery number uh, actually is from a distillery that's done another very, in my in my mind, a very great tequila from back in the day, Rey de Copas. Rey de Copas tequila, whew, man, in the 90s was great. And for them to come out of that same distillery, I was kind of like, I haven't had Rey de Copas you know, in a long time, so I'm hoping it's still good. But I just have this really fond memory of that tequila. So then when I found out this was from there, I was like, okay. And then when I tasted it, I'm like, oh, okay, now it makes sense. This is still really good. I imagine that's still really good. But anyway, 40% ABV, retail pricing about $65, $70. All right, on to the tasting. We'll start with La Pulga. Añejo, on the nose. Oh, golly, there it is. Those candied peach rings, kind of like that. Nectarine, orange bitters. Fresh kind of combination of like fresh and baked agave. So you get that fresh little vegetalness, that little spice, that white pepper and cinnamon note of a fresh agave with the caramelized kind of almost yamish with like uh, molasses on it of the baked agave. <sighs> That's about it. That's not super complex, but what it does, it does really well. Okay, here we go on the palette. Mm. Yeah, it's nice. It's like a big pillow. It's big but soft, right? And when you when I first opened this bottle, because a buddy of mine actually had this a bottle before me. When I first tasted it, it was his bottle. He had had it open for like a week or two. And he told me, he's like, when I first opened it, there was like this kind of, a bitter component to it and he goes and then it developed the fruit well sure enough when I first cracked this bottle again I correlated to like orange bitters is what it kind of tastes like up front and then as it's opened up that's kind of receded and that peach note and that nectarine has kind of come up so that's kind of where we're at right now I expect it to get a little bigger to be honest because his was yeah kind of like that but here we go Medium, just above medium viscosity. Soft and creamy. It's almost like a combination of a... I mean, it's not artificial like that, but it's almost like a dreamsicle flavor where it's that orange cream vanilla, the peach, a little nectarine in there. And then you get that little 
wisp of spice that kind of rises just a touch on the mid palate, not hot. Um, but that's that white pepper cinnamon. And then it kind of lays out with those fruit and the oak on the back end. Very, very nice. Fresh. This is why my wife likes that one. It's so fresh, soft, and fruity, and it's just really um, elegant in the way it presents itself. So this one at $65, fantastic. Uh, one thing to note is that, and I'll put a picture of this as well, there is a lot on this one. And so when I had his bottle, it's on the back. You have to look through the bottle into the back label, on the inside of the back label. You'll see the actual code, the lot number. And so when I saw his, and I knew his was good, I took a picture of that. And so when I went to the store, I made sure I was getting bottles that were that lot. Because again, I'm hoping they maintain this quality moving forward in the next batches. But, you know, that's just the nature of the beast as far as batches are concerned. Sometimes different lots of barrels pulled at different times of years will taste differently. Same exact barrels, they just pulled at different temperatures, and you never know what's going to happen. So... I know this is a fantastic badge, so if you see this one out there, definitely should grab that. Now for this one, the Patron Sherry Cask Añejo, aged two years, on the nose. Oh, this one. This one is... Not right now. I got my dog down here, sorry. I got a new dog, by the way. Let me show Parker, come here. Oh, well. Anyway, got a new little dog, so she's getting used to this. She's never seen this happen before, so... She will get here, but oh, let me see. Come here, Park. Look at this. Look at this Park dog. Name's Parker. Great little dog rescued from the park, hence the name. Oh, my goodness. All right. Okay. Back to business. All right. So this one, much darker on the, the fruit component. It's dried fruits. It's that kind of like dark raisins. Dried plums, dried figs. There's clove in here. There's also a very um, little, there's sulfur. And the best way I can describe it to you is like a spent firecracker. Have you ever smelt a spent firecracker? It's kind of sulfurish, lightly eggish. You know, it's that weird, not so great. There's a little bit of that in here. But it's not terrible, Okay. If you're sensitive to sulfur, you're not going to like it. If you're one of these Scotch guys that can deal with, you know, Edward Hour and some of these others that will uh, do big, heavy, sherry, you know, Scotch whiskeys that have a little sulfur on it. I've had, man, I've had some um, Kleinleash 20 from Signatory that was beautiful, but it did have a little sulfur on it. If you can get past that, you're going to really like this one. Beautiful vanilla, agave, those dried fruits. You can really taste the agave in this one. The agave and the oak, those two are very heavy. You get that raisin plum fig adding the sweetness, the sweetness of that kind of fortified sherried wine in here. But very mature, very old flavor. Dark chocolate. Yeah, the leather and oak on the back end of this is very, very big. Me, personally, I still like this one. Matter of fact, I picked up a couple bottles of this, and I'm glad I did, because even though it may not be everybody's bag, those that really like it will like it. At the end of a night, after dinner, and I'm having this, I can enjoy a glass of it, no problem. But everyone can enjoy a glass of this, no problem, all right? So... Again, if you're a, a, a novice or an enthusiast of tequilas, I think it doesn't matter. You're going to love this one. And this one, more for the more experienced palate. It's got to be somebody that's into tequilas or into single malt scotch and can deal with a little bit of sulfur. They're going to really like this one. But I hope you enjoyed this video review. If you did, please consider joining us over at uh, patreon.com slash liquorhound. It's where I have a complete other video library that's not on YouTube, but you're going to get your videos two weeks early. But most importantly, you're helping support me continuing this channel by being able to self-purchase bottles like these uh, so that, you know, I can bring you these unbiased, straightforward reviews. Anyway, regardless of platform, I'm great that, grateful that you're here. Keep leaving all those great comments. I'll get back to them just as soon as I can. 
Everyone have a great day and cheers.